Good evening, Ape Nation. Guys, what's going on? It is Saturday, December 18th, 2021. I didn't upload a video last night. Thursday night was the last video I made. On Thursday night, I cut that video short. I had been working on it for a couple hours, and all of a sudden, I started to sweat like crazy. It was not hot in my room. It was a little warm for the night. It was maybe like 50 here. Um, but it wasn't because I was hot, and, and my stomach was going nuts, and I felt lightheaded, and so I just cut the video short. I had a lot more on that Total War video that I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> but I was thinking to myself, man, I am an emotionally drained person right now. Uh, I am only human. I'm just like the rest of you guys all out there. Uh, seeing the stock come down this week to $20 was serious gut check time. Tony said it in the video last weekend, and he was damn right. When I saw this psychological level getting hit last Wednesday, I knew we had to have a good day on Friday. And thank God we did. We closed the day out at 29.12. We are up almost 20% for the day. And I started thinking about who is making me feel this way? Who is responsible for my turmoil right now? This emotional... And now physical pain that I'm feeling. And I want to get into that tonight. So, without further ado, cue the speeder. Let's get into this. So for the past year, we've been riding this stock, or however long you've been in it. And we've seen, we've come up against a bunch of obstacles as far as us doing due diligence, digging up information and bringing it to the attention of mainstream media or to Congress or whoever it may be. We saw what happened back in January with GameStop, one of the major reasons I first got into this play with AMC and the GameStop shares that I bought was because I had seen that, wow, really, we are not in control of the stock market right now. I mean, for a brokerage to be able to conspire with a hedge fund to take away retail investors' availability to buy a stock has just never been done before in history. And it was criminal. And what happened? Well, we know that allegedly, and of course we have to say allegedly, uh, Ken Griffin lied to Congress when he said there was no collusion between the brokerages and Citadel or Citadel Securities. And as the testimony and the communications back and forth between Citadel and people at Robinhood were unveiled, uh, most recently with this lawsuit that happened down in Florida, there are some bad actors at play and people who aren't telling the truth and then on top of it aren't being punished. Overnight, another break-in. This one at LA's high-end shopping center, The Grove, leaving store windows smashed. The suspect still at large after a police pursuit. It comes after a separate string of smash and grab robberies in Northern California. Get on the sidewalk. From the heart of San Francisco, to suburban Walnut Creek. Highly organized shoplifting crews breaking into high-end retailers, grabbing merchandise and fleeing. A cluster of getaway cars blocking traffic to aid their getaways. The sprees taking place in a matter of minutes. In all, nine stores were hit. Police say eight people have been arrested with several weapons and thousands of dollars in merchandise recovered. We're not gonna allow people to come in and continue to do this in our city. More officers. All right, so why did I just roll that clip? When people who are in places of authority tell the greater public that you can commit a crime or something that maybe you just think morally is wrong, and not only will you get away with it and not be prosecuted, but on top of that, we're going to defund the people who we normally would send out to chase you down and recover those stolen items. 
it makes people feel emboldened they can go out and get away with much more. If you guys don't know, California has Prop 41, I believe, or 47, that basically allows any burglary under $1,000 uh, as a misdemeanor, not a felony. And so if you're a criminal, why stop there? Let's hit the high-end stores where we can get away with tens of thousands of dollars. If they're not concerned about $500 at Walgreens, uh, why should we be concerned about taking a $10,000 handbag from Fendi? And wh so why am I bringing up what's going on with the smash and grabs in AMC? I feel like the two are very similar. People who are in authoritarian positions have basically told the brokerage apps and the hedge funds that they can do these kind of things and it's okay. The SEC came back and said from time to time, in Gary Gensler's GameStop report that there might be halts randomly in the market for stocks that uh, the brokerage apps might can be considered risky. All kinds of things are emboldening these people and have allowed them to kick this can, this proverbial can down the road. And as long as people who are in power are more concerned about their economic future and how they're going to protect their money, they're not going to be overly concerned about what's happening to our money. And I think that's something we really need to have a discussion about at some point is why are they allowed to keep getting away with this? When we as voters in this country decide to put asses in seats up on the hill in D.C., we expect them to go out and look out for our best interests. They are not there to personally line their own pockets. And so for the next couple of weeks, as we continue to track AMC, hopefully we get to squeeze this stock very soon. But if not, I want to try to focus the next week or so and picking apart all the different people who are underlying here and allowing these things to continue to happen. Because I think that we need to start getting proactive with this. If you are in this play for the moral obligation you feel to have some change in the market, to bring it back to supply and demand, to even the playing field for retail investors right now for ourselves or for the people and the generation coming up behind us, I think it's important that we look in to see how do we fix these underlying factors. What There's a lot of hypocrisy going on right now, and I want to try to break down who these players are just this week alone, Nancy Pelosi came out and she made a quote about a free market economy and how that stock trading by lawmakers and their spouses should be fine. There's no conflict of interest there. And Elizabeth Warren got into it with Elon Musk talking about how he's not paying his fair share in taxes. And yet you come to find out that Elizabeth Warren on 2018 uh, got tax rebates for her solar system. Uh, that was installed at her house. So a lot of hypocrisy going on. I want to try to point out who these people are and how we can start to fix this problem from retail side instead of just waiting around for everyone else. All right, guys, that's all I've got for tonight. I'm going to let you go. I just want to let you know what's coming up, what's going on. I'm still in this stock with you guys. I'm holding strong. We got a little ways to go. Friday was a good day for us. Think positive this week coming up. I'm going to try to do the same. Hopefully, we'll see the market rebound a little bit um, from some of the good news. It looks like Omicron's not going to be that bad. Let's just hope, keep our fingers crossed. And as always, guys, thank you so much for all the support out there from all of you guys. The views, the comments, the likes, um, all that has been such a support to me, especially this last week. I know we all need to lean on each other, and we did. And we made it through the other side. We are still holding this stock strong, and I appreciate all of you guys out there who continue to lift up my spirits as well as each other's. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Massalorian, and I'm out.